Hey everybody, Ian here with Redline, and I wanted to share something with you guys that I don't think the majority, if not the entire hot rotting world, is ignoring and not realizing that's really important regarding oval exhaust tubing uh, on cars that are being custom built. On my car, I'm running a 3 inch stainless steel round exhaust up to this point. Uh, once I get to here, I'm going to be transitioning into an oval tubing so that I can create some space right in here for the uh, the drop down in the floor pan in the rear so that there's some, some extra space for the passenger's feet in the rear, as well as I have to have a skinny exhaust tube that goes over this arm right here for the suspension. Now, the way that you do that is with an adapter that converts your round tubing into oval tubing and I'm curious do you notice something a little bit odd about my adapter right here the end you see right there is a three inch to three and a half inch round so that I'm converting three inch round into three three and a half inch oval why did I not just do three inch round to three inch oval you can buy these adapters all over the place the answer is because it will rob horsepower in doing so that's why I'm stepping up my three inch round exhaust to a three and a half inch oval exhaust uh, to explain let's head to my office and we'll have a look at the whiteboard and I'll show you why okay so let's talk about our starting point this is three inch round exhaust tubing this is what's on the back of the collector on my headers on my 67 nova it's our starting point and i think we can all agree that the area inside the hole right here how much area there is right there how much space for exhaust to flow through this tubing really determines what kind of power we can make and how easily we can flow exhaust gases through our little piece of tubing right here so so the first thing we need to determine is what is the cross-sectional area inside of our exhaust tubing. Uh, the formula to find out what that is, area is pi times r squared. Uh, r being the, uh, the radius of the circle, so if we were to measure all the way across the inside of our tubing, as you can see in this shot right here, you'll notice that the inside of that tubing is 2.9 inches across. That is the diameter. Naturally, if we take that and we divide by 2, we get the radius, which is 1.45 inches. Alright, so let's go ahead and do our math to figure out what our cross-sectional area is. Uh, pi is really just 3.1415 those digits really go on forever and ever but just for simplicity here we're going to use 3.1415 we're going to multiply it by 1.45 and we're going to do that twice okay 1.45 so that basically is r squared uh, our diameter was 2.9 inches half of that is our radius which is 1.45 r is squared so we're multiplying these two things together by themselves twice we do the math on that we get 6.6 .6 square inches. That's ultimately the area inside of our exhaust gas tubing if we're using three inch round tubing. So I think we can kind of all agree at the end of the day that if we're going to change this uh, into oval tubing, which I have to do on my car for clearance issues, the number for that oval tubing better be no less than 6.6 .6 square inches or we're going to be restricting the exhaust. We've got to have at least that much cross-sectional area. All right, so now that we've done that, let's get rid of all of this. And then over here in the uh, top corner, I'm gonna put the area of three R, meaning three inch round equals 6.6 .6 square inches we'll keep that for the future okay so now it's time to figure out as we transition from round into oval tubing here and we go from that to that we're trying to figure out are we going to lose cross-sectional area when we transition to this uh, let's have a look and i'll show you how all right so let's talk about how we're going to compute the area of that oval exhaust tubing i'm going to draw two circles right here to kind of simulate this and then I'm going to take my red marker here I'm going to draw a line connecting the two so that basically at the end of the day we have an oval shape that you can see here now I'm going to draw a dotted line here again kind of 
breaking up our circles uh, for what they are. And at this point, what we have is we have half of a circle over here, and then we have half of a circle over here. And if you'll notice, what we have left that is not, you know, uh, to the right of that circle, all of this in the middle basically just forms a nice great big rectangle. So what we're going to do is we're going to compute the area in the green here, added to the green here, and just model that as really just one circle and then after that we're going to compute the area uh, of the rectangular section in the middle. Okay so for the dimensions of our tubing right here uh, I found two big manufacturers out there that make stainless steel oval exhaust tubing. One is CX Racing, the other is Vibrant Performance. More about their tubing later. I am going to put links down below in the description to both of these companies' websites so you can find uh, you know, their products on their three, three and a half inch oval tubing, all of that good stuff. Uh, but if we take a quick look and we have a look at this eBay listing where I got the dimensions of their three inch oval exhaust tubing, you can see that their tubing is three three and three quarter inches wide by one and a half inches tall. So let's go ahead and label our diagram here. This oval tubing is a one and a half inches tall. It's three and three quarter inches wide, which is the overall width of the tubing from there to there. All right, so using a little bit of basic math, if our circles here are one and a half inches in diameter, we know that the distance from here to here is three quarters of an inch. The distance from here to here is three quarters of an inch. Uh, basically take that away from 3.75 and you can find that the distance, the actual you know, width here of our uh, rectangle in the middle is two and a quarter inches is the width of our rectangle. Okay, so let's go ahead and compute the area of our rectangle here in the middle. We're going to call this, we'll say, A sub R, okay? So that's really nothing more than 2.25 multiplied by 1.5. Do the math there, you're going to get 3.375 square inches. That's the area of our rectangle. Okay, so now let's go ahead and compute the area of our circle. This is our half green shaded area here and then our half green shaded area here. So again, it's pi r squared. So we'll call this a and we'll put a little c up there since it's the area of the circle. That's going to be pi times r. Our diameter is one and a half inches, so this is nothing more than 0.75 times 0.75. Again, do the math on that. You're going to get 1.767 square inches. Okay, so at this point, to compute the total area of our oval tubing right here, all we're going to do is take the area of our rectangle, 3.375. We're going to add that to the area of the circle, 1.767, you're going to get 5.14 square inches. Okay, so this is the point where the epiphany should happen. That simply taking three inch round tubing and squishing it into oval tubing is not going to jive because if we have a look at 5.14 inches and we compare it to our original 6.6 .6 inches, 5.14 is just barely more than three quarters of that number. So we're losing almost a quarter of our cross-sectional flow area when we transition from three inch round to three inch oval. This is the point where you've got to do the math and go, we can't do this. We've got to upgrade our tubing from three inch to three and a half inch. All right, so let's take our area of our three inch, I'll call this three OV, and that was 5.14 square inches. We'll put that away up there for safekeeping. One of the things I want to point out as well is that with the math that we just did where we came up with 5.14 square inches, uh, we were assuming that those were inside measurements of the tubing. They were not. Those were outside measurements. So with this half stuff having about uh, 50 thousandths or so of thickness, it's safe to say that that number right there is actually bigger than it really is. Uh, our cross-sectional flow area of three inch oval tubing is actually less than 5.14 inches. I don't have a piece of that tubing handy, so we're just kind of using outside measurements there, but at the end of the day, we're still kind of accomplishing the same bit of logic. 
Okay, so this is why I'm upgrading my car to three and a half inch oval tubing. If you'll have a look at this shot right here, you can see that the inside width of the three and a half inch tubing is 4.14 inches wide. And then the inside height of the tubing is 1.82 inches wide. So let me go ahead and put the math up on the board again, and we'll compute that using three and a half inch oval. Okay, so now I've got a little diagram and the math up here for our three and a half inch oval. Uh, our tubing is 4.14 inches wide. Wide. It is 1.82 inches tall. A little bit of basic mathematics here uh, tells us that our rectangular area right here is 2.32 inches wide. So let's plug it into the formula again. We've got pi r squared. Uh, r is our diameter divided by 2. So same thing as before, pi r squared. Over here we're computing 1.82 inches tall by 2.32 inches wide. And if you'll do that little bit of math, you'll get 6.8 8.2 square inches. So here is where your second epiphany should come in. At the end of the day, 6.82 square inches is bigger than 6.6 .6 inches. So we're transitioning from 6.6 .6 inches round to 6.82 inches oval. We're gaining a little bit of cross-sectional flow area, and we are definitely not restricting our exhaust system by going from a three inch round to a three and a half inch oval. Okay, so let's post that number up here in the top left-hand corner again. Area, I'll call this three, 5OV for three and a half inch oval was equal to 6.82 square inches. This is where something kind of interesting happens. Uh, as I was doing my research looking at stainless steel oval exhaust tubing and I'm looking at CX racing versus vibrant performance, I noticed something a little odd about their three inch oval exhaust tubing. The folks over at CX racing use a 3.75 inch wide oval exhaust tubing, but the folks over at vibrant performance used a three and a half inch wide oval tubing. Uh, the distance and the height was even greater. For the height, the folks over at Vibrant Performance used tubing what was three, uh, two and three sixteenths inches tall. However, the folks over at CX Racing for theirs use a one and a half inch tall tubing. So uh, the CX Racing tubing was a lot thinner, a little wider. Uh, should this matter to you? Absolutely. So do all the same math again using the numbers from the folks at Vibrant Performance. You're going to get a total cross-sectional area of six. 0.04 square inches. This is again where an epiphany should happen that this number here is substantially bigger than this number and it's actually a lot closer to this number. So at the end of the day the folks over at Vibrant Performance are squishing their three inch round tubing and they're getting 92 percent of the cross-sectional flow area uh, versus the folks over at CX Racing that are getting somewhere in the neighborhood of three quarters. Uh, now this is interesting as well. When I called the folks at Vibrant Performance and I started asking them a few questions, some dimensions of their tubing, they actually told me that and the guy told me right off the bat 92% uh, is what you're going to get. You're going to lose 8% of your cross-sectional area with Vibrant Performance tubing when you smush it from three and a half inch round to three inch oval. So I was really appreciative of that, that they were letting people know that right off the bat. Their tech support actually even told me that they tend to transition from a three and a half inch to a, excuse me, from a three inch to a three and a half inch oval. Exact same thing I am doing here, and I was appreciative of them telling me that up front. Okay, so do you actually need to do the mathematics on the board behind me in order to make an intelligent decision? Not in my opinion. Realistically, you know, if you're running two and a half inch round tubing, upgrade it to a three and a half inch oval just to make sure that you don't use, uh, don't lose any flow. It's worth mentioning that at the end of the day, even though I did the mathematics on it and I knew that, you know, you're going to get better flow numbers from the folks with vibrant performance tube. Uh, I still went ahead and I chose the CX Racing exhaust tubing and I did so because it was squished down really, really thin and I've got some major clearance issues on my 67 Nova where I'm trying to take that exhaust and run it through the rocker. So a thin tubing was really important to me. Uh, you know, you should, you should consider that when you're ordering your tubing, which one you want to go with, but just go ahead and upgrade it by a half of an inch. Take that into consideration how much clearance you got and that's really what you got to, uh, what you got to know to make sure that you don't lose any horsepower. 
I hope everybody has found this video helpful and learned something about flow and oval exhaust tube. I think there's a lot of people out there that are losing flow numbers uh, by just using the same size oval tubing as they are round tubing and have no idea. So hopefully I'm helping folks make a little bit more extra horsepower without really doing anything for it. If you're finding one of my videos for the first time and you want to follow along, please click the subscribe button down below. If you want to make sure you don't miss any of my videos, uh, click the little bell notification down below and you'll be notified whenever I push a new video live by all means tell me what you think in the comments down below ask you questions there normally my videos are shop based videos where I'm showing you what's going on with my Nova in the shop and that kind of thing not so much a lot of videos of this dry mathematical uh, you know scientific nonsense behind me so anyways follow along on my channel I'll try and upload something cool for you guys in the future hope y'all learned something thanks for watching